Good morning, Floss 2. My name is Laura, and I'd like to welcome you to birthday edition of Stitching by the Shore. Thank you so much for pressing play if you are new and giving me a try. I hope you like what you see. Maybe hit subscribe and like and all that fun stuff. And if you are a turner, thank you for coming back today and helping me celebrate my birthday. It would have been funny if this had been episode 51, but we're not quite there yet. This is only video episode, whatever you want to call it, uh, number 36. So um, it is October 23rd and we are here to talk about cross stitch. Um, yeah, that's all I got. I've been doing some paper crafting and stamping this week and hopefully I might be able to show a few things next week. I have a few things going out that I didn't want to show yet so that other people could see them first when they got them. So that's, that's, that's coming. That's down down the road, but today we're gonna to talk about cross stitch and all that fun stuff. I was gonna see if I could make myself a little bit of confetti and throw it up in the air, but then I'd have to clean it up all over the floor afterwards, so I said it wasn't really worth it. But let's get started. I have a lot of stitching to talk about today, and let me see, oh, I already gotta figure out what I'm doing here. Um, Lots of stitching to talk about and some giveaways and a tiny bit of shopping and all that good stuff. So let's, let's just jump right in. I'm gonna grab my iPad because you know I like to show a picture, if I can, um, of some of these. I'm gonna start right away with Nantucket Trio. Nantucket Trio is from Hemlock and Rye Stitchery. Now it is, you can get these separately, but you can also get them as a trio. And that's what they look like, the three of them. If you just fell in love with one of the houses, you could just get the single house. Now I am stitching them all together and I am on house number two. This fabric is 18 count Nantucket Sky. I really didn't plan that. It was just the perfect color uh, by Fabrics by Stephanie. And there we are. Actually, I'm just gonna fold this so I can see what I'm doing. So that's what we've got. I worked a lot up here. I had, actually I did quite a bit. I, I think I just had, not too, well maybe I had the door, but all this top I was working on, what I wanted to do was come up and around and down. I did a quick count um, and look at the fence between this one and the next house, and I don't think I'll have to change it. Like this fence, I had to change slightly. I had to bring a sl slat up and a slat down so that everything would kind of be equal and even. But I think the way she's got the fence designed for the third one, I don't think I have to do that. Um, I think I think I can just keep it along and, you know, they're not exactly the same type of fence, which is perfect, so that there's a little individuality even though they're connected. I just have to figure out, I added a little bit extra so there's like a little bit between the houses. I just have to figure out which of the fences I'm adding extra. All of it is, I'm using all DMC. There are a couple of um, Fancy Floss colors suggested, but she also gives the DMC a blend of two different colors. So that's what I went with, and I love it. I am loving the color of this, the second house. And so I hope this week to definitely get the top done and start working my way down. I don't know if I'll have the connection yet or if I'll have to wait another week for that. We'll see. But that's Nantucket Trio. There is a sale going on with this one on Instagram. If you look at the hashtag Nantucket Trio Sal, you can see some stitching with this one. And feel free to join in and add your own. I'd love to see I'd love to see how you're doing it, singles or together, what fabric you're using, um, are you changing anything up? I'd love to see it. So that's the first one, Nantucket Trio. All right, my next one is, what am I doing? Christmas List. Christmas List by Silver Creek Samplers. I am down now on this bottom half of the pattern, so I'm getting there. I finally, did I finish it? Yeah, I did. I finally finished the bed. I was, I did change. I think there's supposed to be a yellow in there. I changed it just a little bit to keep it with the pink. And so it's pink, red, and with a little bit of green accent. So that's how I kept it. And then I did more words, and I did start the angel. But <laughs> the big thing I needed to buckle down was finish the bed, because I kept going to the words instead. So this is what it looks like all together. We're getting there. And I have changed 
Did I tell you this was on Sea Glass? I don't know. Sea Glass by Bestitch Me, 18 count. Because I've got it on this color, I did have to change a couple of, of the colors. Um, I think, for example, this here, here, the candle, I think I had to change some up on it. A few different things along the way. But it was easy enough. I used, for the most part, I used just some of the other colors or a variation, a next level, like if you were at 930, 931, or 932, somewhere along those lines. So it was still the same kind of color scheme, just changed it a little bit. And I do think I put a little bit of a toile in, I mixed it, one strand of a toile and one of um, yellow. I don't, and I don't know what that was, and I need to do some more down here, so I have to do a little bit of figuring out because I wrote everything else down but for some reason I didn't write that one down so that's my Christmas list I'm getting there so I would like to maybe concentrate on the angel this week and then I just have a couple more lines to go so won't be finished in October that was my original goal um, a line a week was a little bit too ambitious so by end of November maybe would be my goal now we'll see We'll see what happens and that's that one all right now all the others are more fallish halloweenish kind of fall underneath my uh, pumpkin birthday sal uh, theme I mean this one it has a pumpkin technically so it could um, but the other ones were mostly well no two two or three were started for the sal I'm <laughs> I'm starting late Connor had school late this morning and he had to be there at nine and it was like he had to be there at 7 a.m. trying to get him out the door. It was tough this morning and then Mo went grocery shopping so then I waited for him to come back so everything would be nice and quiet. So by now I'd be done and re-watching it, eating my oatmeal and being all set. So I'm a little thrown off here. <laughs> but this next one is Halloween calendar from Tiny Modernist. I'm doing each one separately with a to be determined finish. I'm not determining it till next year because this one's not gonna get done to next year. So this week, I wanted to get a finish on number 11. And I did. That's it. I did not, I ended up not doing the back stitch because I kind of liked him just like that with his nose and his eye. I, I didn't really, the eyebrow and the and the mouth in the end just didn't do it for me so I kept it I kept it a little bit simpler so these are the four that I've so, so far stitched on this this is an 18 count midnight tryst by fabrics by Stephanie everything you see if you're new is 18 count um, so if I don't keep saying it it's 18 count so this was the first set of four and I think this was called haunting by fabrics by Stephanie it's gray, but it has slight tinges of purple in it as well. So it's a light gray and white and some purplish. And then this is the second batch. So this is what I have done so far. And then I've got one more color I want to introduce. But I think at this point I might put this aside into the whip pile and maybe start to revisit it. Maybe at the beginning of next year and maybe have a goal for each month so that uh, it could be finished by Halloween, by October, and then I can figure out. Then I'd have to really pin myself down. Do I wanna make it into a little ornaments for a tree? Do I wanna make it into a banner? And how do I do that if I have the space for that? Those are the questions I don't know answers to yet. This one I actually started at the end, did I start this at the end of September? So it wasn't an October start, um, a birthday start, but this one is hands-on design. Let's talk autumn. Now you know I'm going in a little bit different direction with the with the fabric. This is called Autumn Sunrise by Hand Dyed Happiness. Actually, I'm just not gonna, I'll do this first. So this is where I am. I'm, I really like this pattern, but I'm kind of having a love-hate relationship with these leaves. I pulled out this one here. You really couldn't see it. And somebody did have a great idea of backstitching it, but I wanna see if I can find a color first that I would just like. So I pulled that out and I have to make a decision on that. And I said, I'm not dealing with the leaves for the rest of this week. And I came down and I finished this. 
I did this. There is supposed to be, there's a line missing right now. There was another color introduced, which I didn't really care for, so I think I'm going to go back and just do another line of the mug, the green, the aqua, the teal, teal, that would be teal. And then I started down here for a wagon. So what I will do is continue to work here, continue to think about what I wanna do for the leaves because there are more, way more at the bottom down here. So I do have to come up with a plan. I love everything else about it. I'm still happy I did this fabric. I just have to do a little bit of extra work. A little bit extra. Um, but as I was getting things together, I have an idea that I wanna throw out to you and I'll ask you about it and see what you think. And I'll give it a try and we can see if it's if it's something I can give us a go. So that one's, that one's coming along. A lot of these are potentially going to get put to the side once the season is over. Maybe carry one along and then just like I did with my, because um, this is actually a mania start. What I did with mania was I picked a mania piece and that would be a piece that I would work on until I finished it and then another one. So what I might do is take my different fall and Halloween pieces, my pumpkin birthday style pieces, and work on them a little bit as we go along um, over the year. And so this way, I wouldn't just have a big chunk of whips that I'd have to, to deal with when the season started to roll around again. I, I did, actually I worked on a lot of pieces this week. I touched a lot. Every I think every single day I touched a different piece. And that's because to finish that, uh, Halloween calendar took, you know, I, I only had a little bit to do with this guy. I only had to finish half of him. So Friday is my toughest day for stitching. I don't have a lot of time with it. So I chose that for Friday. And then every other day I just picked another piece. This one I worked on yesterday actually. Betsy's Autumn from Plum Street Samplers. Love that one. And this one is being worked on, stitched on Honey Amber by Fabrics by Stephanie. And this time I'm going to hold it the right way. I love this color fabric. It's so pretty. And that's where we are. I, I'm finding, I used to be able to get some morning stitch time in, and I'm finding lately I can't. So I'm only stitching a little bit in the afternoon and then a little bit in the evening. So not as much sometimes as I thought I would get done. Here, the couple birds, I did work. I connected this branch, worked here, connected down here, and a few little other fiddly things that I needed to fill in. So that's what we have so far. I'm, I'm just, I love this flowy tree. I just love how the leaves flow across the entire piece. So I'm really looking forward to seeing how that looks and the movement in the tree. But I'm really enjoying it. And I'm looking at these colors and I may use them as a reference point for some of the pieces in this one because they definitely are the fall colors and that the deeper rather than less bright fall colors. So I might pick a few of those and use those for the leaves and use it as a reference point. So that's where I am on that one. Really, really enjoying that one. And there is a little bit of set of pumpkins down here. So that does hit my pumpkin birthday style. Okay, the last of my works in progress. I am just gonna show you the black and white picture of this one. This is Pumpkin Owl by Crochetta Gogo. He's so cute. Now, my, my goal was to finish him this week and I did get him finished. And here he is, look at him, he's so cute. So this is done on the fabric is called King's Gold and it is from My Vintage Needle Arts. I will link all of those fabric makers down below. In one section I have like my favorite ones that you see a lot of, but if, if it's not one that I don't use a lot, I will link it within the piece. So I will talk about this as a works in progress and I will say what color of fabric and if I need to I'll put a link. So I got him done and then I started on the swirlies and we're gonna start on the top pumpkin. So there are two pumpkins and then the little mound of grass and then just some little accent pieces around here. So, so love it. I think he's adorable. My goal, 
I don't know because I have to keep changing colors on the pumpkin, but my goal would be to try to get this this first pumpkin done, and then we'll work from there. It's funny, you look here, and it doesn't look like much. <laughs> if you look and you say, I got that pumpkin, that pumpkin, and that, and then you look and, and you say, how is that going to fit? But obviously it must, everything counted, right? <laughs> so that one is my lasso works in progress. I'm loving, this is the first Crochetta Go-Go I've done and I love it, love it, love it. The pattern is so easy to read and I, I definitely want to pick up some more. I might have one more in my pile, but she has some really, really cute ones on her. I look at her Etsy shop and I get digital patterns. I don't know, she may have, and I, this I don't know. Um, some of her patterns might be hard copy as well. I don't know if she necessarily sells them in the Etsy shop or if other places do. I have just gotten digital, that I know. So that's it for works in progress. I do have one new start, one, like I'd have a bunch. <laughs> and as I, so every, every Friday morning before I go to get, when I get ready for the video, I iron up my pieces. And when I went to iron this, I realized I did this one wrong. I'm gonna show it and then tell you what I did and then I think I'm gonna restart it. So this one is called Stone Street Stitchworks Fervent Fall and it has a little pumpkin at the bottom so he, it is part of my pumpkin birthday zap. I will show you, the, this obviously it's a black and white, it's a digital pattern that I have. Um, the tree is gorgeous and I have started stitching the tree so I'll get to show you. It's four colors, there's four colors in this, in this pattern. Um, and this is my first Stone Street Stitchworks, and it is, and again, phenomenal. I love it. So this is where I am. Now, my plan was to stitch it on Vintage Country Mocha. Well, I stitched it on the wrong side, because you know Vintage Country Mocha is one of those that is printed. And for my mother's cottages, I have always been doing them on the flip side, because I didn't want that. Um, I liked this color, and I didn't want that set of movement or modeling. Well, I didn't even pay attention. I started it, and when I went to iron it, obviously I ironed the back, and I realized that that was the side with the actual printing. And I really do want it on that side. I mean, it looks, it looks, the, the isn't that red pretty? It's like a garnet. It's gorgeous, and it looks really nice on this side, but I think it'll look really nice. <laughs> on that side. So I am going to restart this. I'm not pulling this out. I'm going to keep this and maybe I stitch it. Maybe I stitch this one too. We'll see what, how it stitches up the whole thing and what it looks like. And then I just give it to somebody somewhere. I don't know. This tree though is so pretty. And as I'm stitching it, I'm loving the design of it. And I think once it's all done, it's gonna look beautiful. I mean, and you can see that in the picture, you can see the design, but I didn't realize it until I actually started stitching it, just how pretty the design is. So this one will look different next time you see it because I am going to cut another piece of Vintage Country Mocha and I'm going to start it on the correct side. Maybe that'll be my, maybe that'll be my birthday stitching today. Cause I really, I love, I love this. And it's, it's again, a wonderfully easy to follow pattern. It's big. So it's a one, two, it's at least, it's two pages. Um, and this is the, this is the width at this point. And that in whatever length is probably here, but it's two pages, pages. So it's nice and big. Okay. I'm not quite at the point where I have to make everything huge, but you know, my 51 year old eyes are starting to appreciate those bigger, <laughs> those bigger patterns. So that's where I am. It will look different next week. And then I will put this one, I will keep this one and put it aside. And maybe one day, especially if I really like how the finish looks, I will restitch it again. So I was very sad when I went to iron this though, cause I couldn't believe I had the wrong side. <laughs> So moral of the story is check if it is a printed fabric, check both sides so that you know when you're starting that you're starting on the right side. <laughs> so that's my stitching. 
My plans are to continue with the pumpkin birthday sale. Thank you so much for all of you that have been stitching for the pumpkin birthday sale. I have to check the hashtag Instagram and its awful algorithm doesn't show me everything. Even though I'm following the hashtag and I am interacting with the pictures from the hashtag, when I scroll my feed, they don't all come up because then I'll go to the hashtag and I'll say, oh my, I didn't even ever saw that. And the other thing I do is when I go to the hashtag, I have to remember to hit recent versus um, top because then you're seeing the same ones again because it's the ones that have the most interaction. So I hit recent and then I say, oh wow, I missed all of that great stuff. So I will be checking Instagram this weekend. So thank you all and thank you all for putting it on there and stitching it and contributing to a little bit of a birthday stitching celebration. I appreciate it a lot. So those are the plans. I don't think I have anything set to start next this coming week. This is gonna be kind of a new start again because I'm restitching it. And I think I just wanna concentrate on one more week of the pumpkin birthday, and then if it's Halloween-ish, I think I'll put it away. Something like Betsy's Autumn, which is fallish, I might continue, because I really like those colors, and those are November colors. And there are a couple things that I do want to start coming up for November. So I gotta start thinking about what I wanna do with those. So that's, that's the plans, nothing huge. All right, small business, promotion. What did I say? How did I call it last time? I don't remember. So part of my pumpkin birthday sale, I have been trying to highlight some different Connecticut crafters uh, who are out there that are part of my collective. Um, we're called the Nutmeg Collective. Actually, there might be a website. If you were to Google it, you could see there's lots of them. I had reached out and said, who would be interested in me throwing you out there on YouTube? And Tracy, who I'm going to show you next, was one of those who reached out and said, I'd love if you wanted to put something on there. So I'm going to show you Tracy. Tracy is an artist from West Hartford, Connecticut. Yay. <laughs> she lives not too far from me, actually. Uh, she is, I've, I've, of the three that I've highlighted, Tracy, I have actually met. And she is one of the nicest people you will ever meet. She, um, she decorates better than Martha Stewart, at least for the holidays. Um, in years past, she has had a home show, a uh, home holiday show, and she's invited different crafters to come in. There's probably been like eight or nine of us at times, and she puts different parts for, she puts people in different rooms in her home, and she has, you know, food spread and, and wine, and a lovely job, but her house, is I love going to it at Christmas. It's it's just so beautifully decorated and uh, again, Martha Stewart, forget it. Tracy's got it going. So um, there will be no home craft shows this year, sadly. So I will not be able to get to see her beautiful decorating. But Tracy is, well, she's a phenomenal seamstress. So you're gonna see she's pivoted because in 2020 we pivot with our businesses in some cases or our lives. But she's also an incredible uh, jewelry maker and she's got a um, vintage aesthetic. So she takes a lot of vintage pieces and vintage looks and she makes um, items. Oh, and I had jewelry from her that I had picked up and I meant, to, I meant to wear it today to show it off and I totally went out of my head. But her store, and I will link it down below, her Etsy shop is called The Tiny Wren. And on her top here, you're gonna see a lot of different pictures of some of her previous pieces, uh, pieces of jewelry. Again, if you love the vintage look, she is fantastic at it. Now, because she is a fantastic seamstress, she has recently been making masks. So, um, if you are looking for a mask maker and you want to support handmade, Tracy is definitely someone to look at. But then as you come down here, she also has some jewelry listed. And I'm just going to click on one in there to show you a little close up. So for example, oh, this is not going to show up. There you go. A beautiful drop set of earrings. And let me see if I have a better picture that I can show without the extra stuff very beautiful her work is exquisite 
Her detail is exquisite. She is a fabulous artist. So if you want to check out Tracy, I will link her down below and you can check out what she's got. And as if she wasn't talented enough, she just wrote and published a book. Like seriously, published a book book, like a fiction book. She's amazing. So I will, I will link her down below and uh, give you a chance to check her out if you'd like. So that is my small business shout out. We're gonna call it that. Um, uh, especially highlighting Connecticut. I think that might be it for the month. Uh, I put it out there and I, was, I, you, I wasn't gonna chase people. If you want to be promoted, come and reach out to me. So those three artisans reached out to me and so those are the ones that I chose to highlight. And that's, that's wrapping up the pumpkin birthday sale part of it. I guess next week we're wrapping it all up anyway, so there you go. All right, shopping. It might be my birthday today, but I did not do a lot of shopping this week. But what I did, oh, and I'm, it, she's gonna make me cry. I uh, Earlier this week, I went to the mailbox and there was a package from Brie. Brie's Stitch and Stuff. If you are not watching Brie, you're missing out. Not only is she a stitcher, she knits, she quilts, she sews, she does it all. And it's all beautiful. It is all beautiful. She has incredible talent and she is a beautiful person. Uh, personality and thoughtfulness and just everything about her and she's just fun to watch. So go watch Brie if you're not. But I got a package and she sent me this beautiful birthday card, which I love. <laughs> I love the whimsical birds. So cute. And then she made me stuff, which just getting the card meant so, so much to me. I, it reminded me about probably 12 or 13 years ago. It's been a while now. I was he much more heavily into stamping and paper crafting and I was part of a stamping pen pal group and we would send each other cards and you know write little notes and so the mailbox was always such an adventure and so fun to come go to because you get some fun stuff and I beautiful cards and beautiful thoughts and words from people so when I got this t this week Trace uh, Brie I, I it just brought me back to those wonderful times and it was just so thoughtful for you so thank you so much for thinking of me on my birthday and then she sent me stuff, which it, it, she's just so talented. I now have my very first project bag. So you don't normally see it, but every single one of my projects are in Ziploc bags. Target up Ziploc bags, but to be exact. But that's what they all are. I now have my very own project bag. Look at this, fabric is beautiful. I love the colors, sort of matches me today. <laughs> I love the colors, I love this detail difference, I love this, she has a little charm, and it is beautifully made. I mean, I am, I am not a seamstress, but I know when there's good work, and this is, there is beautiful, there is not anything that you could look at and say, oh yeah, I know somebody made this by hand. No, this, this is exquisite work. I mean, I've, I've, I once received, I, I was once talking to um, somebody who I was at a craft fair next to, and she was somebody in my Connecticut group, and she once said to me, she's like, you are the cleanest stamper I have ever seen. And I'll take that as a compliment. I am very picky when I stamp, and if there's the least little bit of smudge, it doesn't go out especially to my Etsy shop. There's no way I'm selling anything that's smudged. And a lot of times people ask me, can I just print? And I'm like, I'm sorry, those weren't, I actually made every single one of those by hand. So it's a great compliment to me that uh, it, it looks, prof I don't wanna say professionally made, that's not right, but the, the, it's clean and it's, and it's just done right. And this is exactly that. Her work is exquisite. So Brie, I love this, but that's not it. Then look, she added one of these little guys. The vinyl front, 
And the fabric again. Look at that. I love, love, love that. And the accent is just perfect. Love the accent part of it. Again, exquisitely done. Sewing is beautiful. And then she sent me a pattern, Summer in Nantucket by Plum Street Samplers. And I do not have this one. I love it. I've looked at it a, a time or two, but I just never got to it. But it is perfect. It'll, it's got a little whale up top there, and she's riding a whale, and I adore it. It's got a lighthouse. What more could you ask for? So Brie, you... <laughs> I did cry a little bit and it's funny because the, the package came in and I started opening I'm like oh my god it's a birthday gift and Mo looked at me and didn't think anything and then I, I got really happily emotional he's like what what's the deal I'm like no somebody sent me something when I said it was a birthday gift he thought I had just bought it myself and I had come in as a birthday gift because that's generally what I do um, but this was a real honest to god birthday gift so brie thank you so much and i'm going to start crying again so i have to i have to stop <laughs> so thank you for being so thoughtful i really appreciate it and i'm telling you if she ever starts to sell her work run and i mean run and get something because this is exquisite okay i do have okay <laughs> I am a crier if you haven't if you if you don't I don't know if I've ever mentioned that I am a crier I cry when I'm happy I cry when I'm sad I cry when I'm mad which then gets me more mad because I don't want to cry when I'm mad but I do <laughs> I don't know are you like that too um, I ordered a few a couple different things very little tiny tiny order from one two three stitch because it was so tiny it came so fast actually I wasn't expecting it this week I just picked up a couple patterns I really loved the We Santa 2020 from Heart and Hand, and on the back of it was this one, and I said, oh, that's so cute. So I had to order that one. And this, I, this could be doable for Christmas. We'll see. Then, I have no idea. This is kind of just collecting these at the moment. I have had these, now that I've started my Bells of Ireland by Nora Corbett, I realize that it's doable. It's not completely out of the realm of my abilities. And I've always looked at these and I've got a bunch in my wish list. So I picked up one from Nora Corbett. This one is called Raven, part of the Bewitching Pixies. And I love all of them. I figure oh, I'll just slowly accumulate them. And then when I want to start them, I will. And then the very last one here, I don't know if this was, I don't even know how I, this, I, I was shown this because I've never heard of designs by Lisa is the is the designer and this one is called seaside Christmas and so it's got different seaside images mixed with Christmas so I thought that would be cute for some Christmas ornament stitching so yeah designs by Lisa I looked up keeping you in stitches is her tagline cute and Lighthouse, Anchor, Sea Lion, and Starfish or are the four pieces in here. And that was from 123 Stitch. So that's it for shopping. That's all I got. Um, I think I have a fabric of the month coming from Be Stitch Me. And I don't know. I think I might. Tonight is a Friday night fight night. We'll see if I stay up till 10 o'clock. And it's hard. It's hard to get stuff now because she has over 3,000 members. So... I'm kind of now like, if I get it, I get it. If I don't, eh, eh, so be it. I'm not gonna worry myself over it anymore. So maybe I'll have something from Fight Night, but if not, no biggie. Um, maybe I'll just place an order for some pieces. I haven't ordered from Stephanie in a while, so I might I might have to check out Stephanie's stuff and, and maybe do a birthday order from there. So that's it for shopping, not much at all. Let's talk giveaways. We're almost done here. It'll still be a long video. I seem to talk too much. So old business, last week's giveaway winner. So this this is a week old now. This was the winner I chose last week for the Mill Hill, Mill Hill Bead Kit. I had chosen the name Ruth Townsend. So Ruth, you'll have one more week to get to, back to me 
um, either send me your address through Gmail. Um, the address is down below in the description box. Or you can DM me on Instagram. Um, yeah. If I don't hear from you before I take my next video, I still have all my names in here. So I will pick a new name. So that is old business. Now let's pick, let's pick from this week's. All right, I have two bowls. I had to pull out my one of my Halloween bowls because I I keep the old names in a bowl until it's you know until I send this stuff out in case I have to repick again. So um, I had to pull out a third bowl here since I'm giving away two things which I don't normally do. All right, so remember these pieces of fabric they were sponsored by Dove Stitch and I linked them in last week's video this first batch here was for three pieces of Ada and I can't remember did I count them all as 14 count I might have I don't remember exactly so those are the pieces that Dove Stitch sent me for the giveaway and Let's see here who we've got. All right, I didn't mix them up before, so that's why I'm doing that now. Okay, and I don't look, so I have no idea who's gonna get it. Okay, and the winner is Owl and Gator Stitcher. You won. So the Ada is yours. Now, Owl and Gator, if your name comes up for the other one, I have to throw throw it to the side because it's two winners but you are getting this so if you could just send me your address again either with the gmail or on instagram that would be great and i will send those off to you probably won't get to the post office until tuesday or wednesday of next week so you have some time if you see this before then um if you give it to me, I will just get everything packaged, but I won't get to, I know I'm not getting to the post office. Tuesday the earliest, Wednesday possibly. So just a heads up on that. All right, so who is our winner of the, I'm calling it even weave. It's a surprise of what you're getting. Okay, and the winner is V Riggin. So V Riggin, see I did these in different colors so I'd know which one was which. If you could get back to me with your address, I will send you out the two pieces that Dove Stitch donated for this set with the giveaway. So that's that. Now I do have a giveaway this week. And before I forget, I always forget to give the rules. You know most of them. I mean, I have not said don't say giveaway, don't say free, but you guys are all smart enough to know that, that you know you don't say that. Please be 18, um, subscriber, I'd really love it. I, I am, I'm going to respect privacy and not require you to have a public subscription to me, but I'm going on your honor. If, if, if you are um, entering these giveaways, please, I would love it if you could be a, um, if you could be a, a um, subscriber. I'm, I'm getting a couple a birthday messages come down from texts so <laughs> as I'm as I'm trying to talk something comes and drops down on my phone and then I, I lose my, my train of thought so but subscriber I would really appreciate it if you would hit that subscribe button uh, especially if you're well in general but especially if you are going to um, enter the giveaways so this week's giveaway so last week was fabric this week is floss um, yeah, this week is floss. So I'm, I don't even know. I'm gonna show you each of them separately. So I've got a bunch of different things that are gonna be part, it's all just one. So one person will win all this. First, hmm, let me see. Okay, I can use the back of this. All, the only thing on the back of this is just the, the, the actual uh, floss colors. So this is a week's dye works and it's called pumpkin, I believe, yes. So see, see, we're still on a theme here. And this will be all themed. The colors you're going to see in your giveaway are all themed for my pumpkin birthday sale. So at Weeks Dye Works, you get a piece of that. This one is not named. It's a Threadworks floss, over dyed floss. Look at those colors, though. Those are beautiful colors. I love those for fall and autumn. Fall slash autumn. It's the same thing, I guess. <laughs> 
So you get that. Then we go a little shiny. And this also doesn't have a, a name, I don't think. Petite Treasure Braid. So you get one of those. And then two Sulkies. So you get one that is unvariegated and one that is variegated. Really, really pretty. And this is where I wanted to ask you. So when I bought these for you guys, this is not a sponsored giveaway. This is all me for you. I actually bought one of each of these for myself. And as I was thinking about it, I wonder if I could use either the, actually the variegated would be kind of cool maybe for the leaves. I'd have to see or I would use just the plain. So I might try that on this on this piece here, the Let's Talk Autumn. But these, these ones are for you, for whoever wins. So the giveaway is the Weeks, the Threadworks, the Two Sulkies, and the Treasure Braid. So you get a little bit of everything. Okay, so what is it the question is gonna be? Well, since it's my birthday, what is your favorite birthday treat? So if you, is it birthday cake? Is it just a big bowl of ice cream? Uh, I, was watch, I was looking on Instagram yesterday and Brie, it's, it's the Brie show today. Brie's daughter's birthday was yesterday and happy birthday, Lorelei. Um, um, what was I gonna say? Oh, and she, instead of birthday cake, she made herself, was it an apple pie? Might have been, might have been an apple pie. So it got me thinking like, would you want a birthday cake or some other type of birthday treat? What would be your favorite birthday treat? So everybody can answer the question. If you want to enter the giveaway for the floss, please say the word floss somewhere in your comment as well. It doesn't have to be mixed in. <laughs> After a birthday cake of blah, 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 I floss my teeth. No, you don't need to do that. <laughs> you can just put the word floss somewhere. Okay, so tell me your favorite birthday treat, whatever it happens to be. Maybe it's homemade Rice Krispie treats. I don't know. Um, and if you want to enter, say the word floss, and in your name will go. So that's, that's, that, that's this week's giveaway, and I did actually mention some of the rules this time, which afterwards I always forget, and I say, oh, I forgot and it's too late so but you guys you know already you know what the deal is other than that what's going on life wise uh, not too much we are going to be hopefully closing on the house in a couple weeks and hopefully I can get some pictures to show you um, Megan is coming home and I want to say three weeks I want to say the week before the weekend before Thanksgiving they are wrapping up in-person classes, sending them home for Thanksgiving and keeping them home and going virtual for the rest of the semester. So we're starting to think about that and, and going to get her. Um, Connor had a great time at his college visit last weekend. He really liked the school, so that's another one we can put on the list of applying. So that's good, at least now he's not only, for the longest time, he hadn't really done much. <laughs> So it was one school he was applying to and I said, you might want to look at some others and try to figure out some things. So I think we're up to five. I think five schools would be the list. One of which being a big reach, but hey, that's that's what you do, right? Because you never know. You never know what'll happen. So he enjoyed that. They had a good trip. It was an easy ride. Everything was socially distanced, but he was able to see the school and hear about it. So that was great. And other than that, not a lot going on. Um, tonight we are um, just gonna eat in. I So for everybody's birthday this year, it's like, what do you want for dinner? And one of my favorite things to do, now it's vegan, so it's a little different, but it's a vegan char charcuterie board. So I make my own cheese and um, have different types of crackers and I make, I either do a white bean dip or a hummus, I haven't decided yet. And uh, you know, I love my veggies and you know, olives and the whole bit. And Connor to the side will get some, he doesn't like the vegan cheese that I make, so I think Mo got him some regular cheese because he's a vegetarian, but he's not a vegan. So, um, but that's what I wanted for my birthday. I actually have a picture of one that we did one time on my Instagram, so you can make it 
Um, even if there's things that you don't eat, um, it's still a lot of fun. So that is my birthday dinner that I'm excited looking forward to tonight. And that's about it. So my stitchy friends, I hope you are well. I hope you're staying safe. I hope you are... I'm finding myself a bit anxious as we get through uh, to the beginning of November. I've already voted, but I just kind of, I'm, I'm ready to just figure out head on what's happening um, and then deal with all the other stuff in life. So I have found, I have found that doing this has been a great counterbalance to being a bit anxious as the fall has hit and the cold weather and, and all, the, all the stuff going on right now. Um, and staying in so you guys have been wonderful just being able to talk to you and stitch with you and see your stitching and all of that it has helped me immensely I can't even I can't even tell you but I hope you continue to stay safe and you are well um, physically mentally just have that support that you need and know that you have been a wonderful support for me um, and in so many ways so I am extremely grateful for that but my stitchy friends until next time happy stitching